I'm Fern. And I'm Fern. We're the, We're ferns. the ferns. And this show is called Literally Between Two Ferns. And this fern, who's the expert in analytics, we bring together the brightest minds in analytics, and I ask them questions. And I listen. She listens well. I try. And she answers questions. I try to. Sometimes she asks questions. I try that also. She's good at it. I try that too. She's very good. Thank you. She's my sister. She's my sister. We love each other. And we're between the two ferns. Welcome to Literally Between Two Ferns, Claudia. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you again. <laughs> What's the company that you work for? Tell us a little about it. So I joined about seven years ago a New York-based uh, back then startup in the advertising technology space called Distillery, originally called Media Six Degrees. And it's uh, an example of kind of this new wave of uh, data mining and machine learning making itself into industries where you possibly would never expect to see them, advertising being one of them, where the core value proposition is really making sure you find the right people who make advertising relevant to the person who sees it. So they lured me away from IBM Watson and the rest is history. Mm, and you have hmm. close to 3,000 Twitter followers, Fern? 2704. Do you think I we'll just, get up to 3,000 now with this show? <laughs> <laughs> we could do that, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd be so, very happy to see that. Well, you're a data scientist, so if anyone wants to figure out how to game the system, you could do it. Yeah, possibly could, but... Um, I think we should leave it on its own and yeah. see where it leads us. If you want to um, tweet, you can talk about hashtag accelerate, hashtag TDWI. You know, that's that. why you're here, right? Perfect. We're talking about this accelerate yeah. event. No, all kidding aside, <laughs> let's talk about R and Python. I grew up when Perl was the mm. uh, language en vogue, so I have not yet quite managed to um, kind of uh, move my skill set over to Python, but I appreciate Python a lot and a lot of people in our team use it. I have spent a lot of time, many, many quality hours back at IBM uh, research um, building models. So um, both of these languages, I think, are key to the tool set of data science. One of my questions to you is, do you think, which, is, which do you prefer, open source tools like R and Python or commercial tools? What do you think that the benefits and, and problems with each are? Today, um, the open source tools tend to be adopted faster. People tinker, people share their uh, new algorithms and to put it out there on GitHub so other data scientists can use it and evaluate it. So I personally appreciate that very intellectually open sharing culture. And I think that resonates uh, with the use of open source tools primarily. And so for the IT infrastructure, it's a nightmare to maintain a whole bunch of scripts that, that data scientists wrote in open source. Uh, it's much easier to just have this kind of solid foundation where everything works, no questions asked. Um, but to the point that right now, the data scientist is really the limiting factor and possibly the most expensive resource you have, I think people have made peace with the fact that, hey, if you want to keep your data scientists happy, because if they leave, you have a much bigger problem. And so we see the adoption of open source sneaking into environments where we didn't used to have it, because it seems to be one of the parts that make data scientists happy. One of the other big buzzwords around the industry is storytelling, storytelling with right. data. What, what's your view on storytelling with data? Do you think it's important to be able to know how to tell a story? with data, and what's the value in that? At the end of the day, it's all fun and giggles if you build cool algorithms and you have these data sets and uh, kind of play around with it. But if you actually feel that you want to have impact, whether this in the context of a corporate job or if you volunteer for data kinds or other uh, um, kind of non-profit uh, data activities, it comes back to the point that you need to get people to change the way they make decisions. Storytelling is an important component. I prefer to talk about this as communication skills because at the very far end of storytelling is what I often possibly with a bit bias dismiss as um, just sexy, cool things that at the end of the day I have not necessarily um, a lot of confidence that I believe it. What advice would you give people who are using data preparation tools who maybe aren't as savvy um, in terms of what to look for? What should they be thinking about? Or is it, right. just a, is it also a matter of subject matter expertise? 
Um, I think there is some of the latter, but there's nothing wrong with tools that make me more efficient. I love tools that help me make my job better. But I think it's part of the education process as you learn the craft, because there's a lot of, they call it data science, I think it's a lot of craft. It's like making shoes, you have to do it uh, 2,000 times uh, until you're actually any good at this. So you mentioned something really interesting about education. Of it's course, right. oh, well, of course, TDWI has been <laughs> educating people for 20 years. We have an event that's coming up um, pretty soon in October that's focused on analytics, data science, storytelling, all of that called Accelerate. Accelerate. So what mistakes do you see data scientists make when they do analysis? We don't make mistakes. You're right, I don't make mistakes either. <laughs> Where are you from? Your accent is interesting. So I grew up in East Germany, uh, in a small town south of Leipzig, and uh, I then spent some time uh, studying in, in Darmstadt. Ultimately, more accidental than anything, um, went to uh, CU Boulder at Colorado, and that's where I took my first AI and machine learning course back in 95. So the accent is from Colorado, but no. are, are you interested in, <laughs> are you, have you been to Seattle? Um, so Seattle is one of the um, really centers of machine learning, has been uh, primarily because of kind of the big uh, companies in that space uh, with Microsoft Research uh, being there and Amazon. And so I have visited a few times uh, going and, and giving uh, talks at uh, some of these locations. Um, it's lovely except for the weather. I'm not sure I would ever want to live there. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> But maybe you can visit there and... No, visiting is great, so I'm saying. It's really, it's an amazing, amazing place to be and just kind of get this energy of the place. Yeah, and, and get a new accent. I don't know. That may take a little longer yeah. than I want to stay there. I like the one that you have, I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It agrees with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And take one and action. Well, that's the show. Thanks everyone for joining us and remember to book your tickets to Seattle, October 16th through 18th for TDWI Accelerate. Bringing together the brightest minds in analytics. This wraps up episode 0-1 of our show. We'll be back with episode 0-2 soon. I'm Fern. And I'm Fern. Thanks, Thanks again.